Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, are you there? An audible. Shall we start the eighth experiment today? So if at all uh, there is any problem with uh, the screen and the audio, kindly let me know now. Okay. If not, we shall start. So today we will discuss the experiment on the journal. So what do you mean by journal bearing? So journal bearing when even we have diagrams of CAD, or CAM. In your previous years, you know how it works. It is a hard print bearing where. Uh, the shaft, heavy shafts with the heavy speeds are supported. Usually, shafts with lower weight and high speeds are supported with uh, the ball bearings, but general bearing will come into picture where it is a fat bearing. The requirement of heavy load and without any causing any kind of vibrations to that particular load at that particular speed. So, in such uh, huge applications, the general bearings are being used. I mean, it, even it works fine for the smaller applications and uh, uh, for the uh, smaller speeds also, it works fine. But the main concept of general bearing is um, there will be a shaft and there will be a housing of that particular bearing. So there will be minimum oil thickness which has to be maintained. And this particular minimum oil thickness is only of at a particular speed. That means uh, if this is a shaft and this is a bearing, the pressure distribution across the shaft, across the bearing, is different at different points. That means it does not uniform. As per theoretical procedure, as per Lewis equation, you can say that the pressure distribution uh, across the shaft or across the bearing is same. But, uh, that means it is uniform the circumference but it does not that is what we are trying to analyze in this particular experiment and how it would be done we shall directly look into the experimental procedure now so this is the experimental setup uh, so here you can see uh, there is a journal bearing at the center and different tappings are taken so different tappings are taken uh, in a prescribed manner in the sense for every 30 degree a single tapping is taken over that for every 30 degree. So for that 30 degree a single tapping is been taken and it is further connected to numerous pipes and which has a specific region towards it. And the oil for this particular bearing can be used as say 30 or as say 40 whichever is convenient. You should first ask the attendant over there so which oil uh, she had he had filled it up already and that particular oil you have to use it uh, filling this so once you have started you, you can start uh, using it in a stack like this so the pressure of all the toilet tappings would be varied you can observe the variation in that pressure so slowly you have to increase this pressure and is a uh, speed up to that particular point where uh, it is specified by your external or uh, whoever uh, is the uh, evaluating authority on that thing. So he'll be saying that particular speed for that particular speed you have to just turn it off like this. So once you have uh, set the speed you have to wait half, half an hour you should never take the readings you have to wait to so that the oil in that um, gets heated up, oil in that gets heated up, and the stability of those pressure lines are maintained. So once everything is of such is done, so uh, if you have waited for an half an hour duration, after that you can go to 
practice, if you closely observe it, there are different oil levels you can observe. Okay. So for everything that have been marking has been done, and for everything there is a ruler attached. Ruler in the sense the scale on which you can measure the reading. So based on that scale reading, you have to measure. So you can see the different oil levels present here. This has to be taken, remember, when it has to be taken, it has to be taken after half an hour of running. So for half an hour, half an hour, you have to keep the motor running so that the oil gets heated up and the stability constraints are met. After that only, you have to take these readings. So for every level, for every level, you have to take the reading. So there, there are totally 12 pipes attached to 12 different tappings of the journal bearing. So for that 12 pipes, you have to take the pressure reading where your P0, the initial one, would be your supply pressure. That means uh, whatever the pressure at which the oil is being supplied into the uh, journal bearing, that you'll be taking as P0 and remaining all the things, all that one will be taking as P1, P2, P3, P4, up to P12. So that those are nothing but the lens of the oil column in this particular case which you are seeing now. Okay. Anything else? So this is the supply oil tank, the black color one, where you can observe the things. So that is the only reading which you take uh, from this experiment. So once you take that reading, you come back to the experimentation. As I told you, uh, let us see some of the observations that you might have been useful while you are uh, calculating the things. So, diameter of the journal. Journal is nothing but you know it is a shaft. So, diameter of the shaft is 50 mm and the diameter of the bearing is 55 mm. Okay, so that means uh, there is a radial clearance of 5 mm between the shaft as well as the journal. Okay, the length of the bearing is 70 mm. So, if you uh, measure the Overall longitude and length, it is of 70 mm. And the weight on the bearing with attachments is 226. Suppose uh, most of the cases they I might ask you to add the weight in the bearing where there is a separate for you know, add the weight of the the plane which is taken as 226. Ah, this is the supply head which I was talking about the oil pressure or oil column. Uh, which, uh, which is at which the oil is being supplied into the journal bearing. So that is the 740 mm. The shaft speed, uh, so here they have taken it as 1500 rpm. So 1500 rpm is taken as a benchmark to just take the reading. So it can be deferred, it can, the external can ask you to take at 1200 rpm or 1000 rpm. It depends upon the external. Accordingly, you have to set the speed of the motor using that immostat and allow it for the half an hour so that the oil gets settled down and heats up. So these are the few observations. So once that observation is done, and these are the readings at different angles, you can say like, see, at 30 degree pipe, it, the pressure head is 1930 mm. At 60 degree pipe, the pressure head is 0 mm. Uh, at 90 degree pipe, there is 300 and it goes on. So for every 30 degree angle, you'll be noting down what, what were their lengths like this. Okay. There were lengths like this, you have observed in the previous figure, so it will be noted down individual length for individual column. So for 30 degree, what was the length? For 60 degree, what was the length? Similarly, going on up to the 360 degree where 12 different tappings are being attached at 12 different locations at 30 degrees foot in the channel area. Okay. So supply head, so when you move, subtract it, so you'll get the overall head. The supply head is 740. And the pressure had at that particular point is 1930. So the, uh, the difference between these two is double one nine zero. Similarly, you have to calculate all the parameters. Just uh, subtract the supply head with the actual pressure reading, whatever you get. Then you get the total head, which is P minus P naught. Once you got it, so now it's time to draw a graph. Okay. So this is a graph how will you draw. So initially what you have to do, first initially you have to uh, mark the origin for this. So let us mark the origin for this. And you have to divide your graph sheet using your protractor or any other convenient device that you have. And this nine. Thank you.
all of the uh, graph sheet like this. So this is the primary thing which you want to do, okay, which you will do. Okay. So what you have to do initially, you have to split it, the graph sheet into 30 degree splits. You have to split the graph sheet into 30 degree splits always. Okay. Once that is done, uh, for zero, what was the total head you have to mark? For 30, what was the total head you have to mark? For 60, what was the How to do it? So if you have, can observe the red color marked line now. Already been reading is being taken. Okay. For um, start from the 60 degree. 60 degree somewhere comes here. And 90 degree it is somewhere. Accordingly, you have to derive. So you can use the scaling for that. You can use the same scaling. And you have to mark the values of the total head on the consecutive line like this on the consecutive line whatever line you have taken so once you have marked all the lines of the pressure of the total pressure on the 30 degree split lines then this whatever is being highlighted you have to join it throughout the things okay on the points whatever you mark you have to just join it like this which forms the pressure distribution of the journal there okay so you have to take a break of a point where it is breaking up at this particular point after this it is moving away like this so that's why you have to mark that particular point uh, now you should observe the blue color where you'll come back and uh, come back to the origin and uh, measure how much it has deflected to outbreak so that is 30 degrees so 30 degrees is this particular region you have to break down okay so thirty if you get fifty, keep the side see when the calculations are made. So you observe there are two different circles, one is in the green color and one is in the red color. So green color circle which is used for the representation of periodical pressure distribution. Okay, so green color one is a representation of periodical distribution whereas this one the red color one is the representation of the practical distribution the red color one is just a representation of the practical distribution so you can observe it very very clearly that theoretical and your uh, experimental are totally different when it comes to a representation of that things in the practical sense okay now we shall look into some of the calculations. So down why by the pressure distribution we have calculated the value of 5 max to be 150. Okay. Now now we have to calculate the eccentricity ratio, which is n, which is given by cos 5 max is equals to minus 3n divided by n square plus 2. Now you have to calculate the value of n. 5 max you have noted down from this one from the graph, which is 150. So just substitute cos 150. Then is equals to minus 3 n divided by n square plus 2, where the only unknown factor here is the value of n. Okay. So if you multiply and solve it, you can solve it in either of the ways. You can solve it using a quadratic equation concept. You know it, it's the basis of maths. Otherwise, what you can do, you can directly use your calculator. First, form the quadratic equation from that. Then you can use your calculator for ax plus b is equals to c using this expression you can just uh, use your calculator mode setup 5 equation directly you can substitute the constants of the variables then you will get the values of n directly from your calculator either of the ways you can do either you can solve it by your mathematical procedures using quadratic equations or else you can use your calculator directly to substitute the values of constants and then getting the values of the variables like this so n is equals to 2.732 or n is equals to 0 0.732 since uh, n is always less than 1 n is nothing but eccentricity ratio right it cannot be greater than 1 so 2.732 value was neglected and this value is considered and the value of n is calculated as 0 0.732 now coming to the summer field constant that is uh, the value of k in order to calculate the value of k, you can use this expression which you need to remember uh, that is p minus p naught is equals to minus k into sine 5 into 2 plus n cos 5 in divided by 1 plus n cos 5 whole square. So, phi you know already well left, n you have calculated what is the value of n. 
next p minus p naught you need to find it out so that you can uh, calculate what is sum of tails constant so p minus p naught is nothing but rho g h so rho is 13600 g is 9.81 and h is or the supply hat which is 1190 okay to substitute the things the only unknown is left in the equation is the value of k so that you can calculate your value of k to be minus 0.03 now the load on the bearing so i told you there is no other extra weight which is added into the uh, bearing so it is just the dry weight of the bearing that is 452 kg okay from the observations of uh, mean positive head you can uh, calculate so how do you calculate positive head you have to come back to the tabular column like this so in this particular tabular column you have to pick so these values the total head values in this uh, total head values what are the positive values are there so what are the positive values are there those you have to take a tab and you have to uh, take a average of those values so when you take the average of those those values you will get the value of um, the mean positive head okay load carried out uh, by the oil pressure is projected by the area uh, load carried by the projected area of the general bearing can be calculated as how much what is the capacity of the bearing that it can carry that also can be calculated which using the expression h into rho into q r that h is 233.34 and rho is 904 which is the density of the oil which will be given you in the form of observations and 2 rl r is the radius of the bearing and l is the length of the bearing substituted so the maximum weight that can be carried by this particular bearing is 2 kg so calculating this will end your experiment okay so it's a simple experiment where uh, you can calculate the pressure distribution of the general bearing and uh, even the maximum load which can be uh, applied Right, on this particular general bearing so any doubts in this particular experiment any doubts okay